Okay, so we are back on the boot. Now I have um, put the original colors back on there, the original shaders, just so I don't have to look at the checker map. But it is, um, it is UV'd like it was before. So we're going to continue from here. So what we're going to try to do today is just um, project some of the details that are coming off of the scan onto our mesh okay now the first issue we're going to run into is that if you remember back uh, near the beginning of the series we actually used a GPU cache for our boot and the reason that we did that was so that we didn't need to have as you can see as I select it we have no selected polygon so this thing is actually not sitting in this file it's just like a reference to it in the file so we did that to lighten the file for one and also make things move a little faster uh, especially with quad draw and what you what have you uh, by by me by using exporting the original boot into a cache and then bringing the cache into this file we got a much lighter file and a much more responsive file problem with that now is that we cannot use this GPU cache to project our details onto our model boot so you could either just export your boot into a new file and, and, and then import the original scan into that file or you could just bring the scan into this file which is what I'm going to do so I'm going to hide this GPU cache one okay and then I'm just going to import oops let's do an import and we're going to import Where's my scenes folder? And boots. And if you remember, we saved out a file with that scan in the correct position. That way we can use it. We could use it again. So I'm just going to import that boot scan file and give it a second. And here it is. And now you'll notice that when I select it, I actually do have faces and inverts and whatnot. And it's a very, it's a, what is it, 1.8 million polygons. So the file would be a lot more sluggish now. But we only, we're only going to do this just so we can project these um, details. Okay, so I'm going to isolate the scan and the upper part of the boot here. Okay, so you can see that obviously they occupy the same space because we modeled our boot off of the scan. So what we're going to do is go into our rendering menu set and under lighting and shading we have a transfer maps. So this is the dialog that you would use to transfer some of these details. So the target mesh, because I had this selected, I call it panels, is the shape node of that is is uh, has been input into the target mesh. So the target mesh is the one that we want to project details onto. The source mesh, we want to be our scan. So I'm going to select my scan here. I'm going to add that as my source mesh. So we're grabbing the details from that mesh to then project onto our mesh. Okay. And by default, if you click normal, oh, that's, there's already a normal map. Uh, selected here so by default so I'm just gonna remove these because they're not there by default so then I'm gonna give it I'm gonna tell it where I want to save this I'm gonna give it a format in this case TIFF so I'm gonna put in my source images folder uh, leave all this checked on here and I'm just gonna tell it to connect the generated maps to my assigned shader by default it's on new shader I'm gonna tell it to just apply that to that green shader that I have on there just so I can see it. I don't want to have to, to reassign a new map. Just plug them into this, the shader I already have. Um, and then everything else, map width and height depends on um, the size that you want. I went 4K because I can always make it smaller, right? Um, keep aspect ratio should be on. And then... Um, I left this at world space. We'll see how that works. Now you you know there might be a little bit of trial and error that you got to do to get them just right. So that's one of the things that you can play with. Sampling quality um, default is low. I've set mine to medium. Now 
bear in mind that as you go up between you know low medium high your your uh, projection times are going to increase quite dramatically um, so even at medium at medium at 4k it takes quite a bit of time at least on my computer which is kind of old so you can decide uh, what works for you you're probably gonna have to do this multiple times with, with different settings to see which ones give you the best results um, back up top here at the target meshes you can so basically the way that this works I'm gonna just deselect everything here there's a search envelope by default this is set to zero so the search envelope is how far out from the mesh it needs to search for details so right now the display is set to mesh if we set the display to envelope it's actually showing you that envelope of where it's going to look for the details so you can see that some of these details fall outside of the envelope so let's go point one and you can see that the envelope gets a little bit bigger okay so it's going to search out to point one units which I believe the default is centimeters so it's going to search out that far let's go point two Oops. and we're going to go out to there now you don't want to you don't want to overdo it I think this will probably work and again this is one of those trial and error things that you might have to do multiple times um, until you get something that works okay so and these are the, these are the different kinds of maps that you can output. Right now, we're just worried about the normal map. If you want to do a displacement map, you can do that as well. But we're just going to worry about the normal map for this. So once you've set the settings the way you want in advanced options, I don't really mess with this at all, honestly. Um, but feel free to experiment. So once you have all that set, all you need to do is hit bake or bake and close. And it's going to go through and do it. Um, so I'm not going to make you sit here and wait for me to, to, to do it. So I will run it and then I will be back and we'll continue from there. So once the normal map has been generated, it attaches it to that existing green shader that I had on there. And as you can see now, we have a lot of that detail now attached to that shader. Okay, so obviously there's going to be some issues here and there, like this will probably need to be cleaned up. Um, little things like that. But overall, not bad. Now, obviously, things like laces have been, or, and the lace loop things have been projected on there. You'd have to go in there and adjust that normal map. Say in Photoshop, um, you've got some issues like here where it couldn't get in there because it was just sort of a solid mass in there. You know, these are easy things to, to just erase from the normal map in Photoshop. So that is what I would do. Um, so overall, not bad. If I bring the rest of it back here, you can see that our details on there now. You can see that this is not the scan. This is the actual geometry I modeled. And the normal map is now on there. Um, and what does the normal map look like? Let's go ahead and look at it. So if I hit the view button here, so, you know, not perfect. We got some artifacting issues here. A lot of that has to do with um, Maya not being able to get any detail out of those areas. So we get things like this, but for, for the most part, most of it is pretty clean. Okay, so you could just go into Photoshop and start erasing some of this stuff just get your or even a paintbrush tool sample this color here and then use that to just paint over some of these things that you don't want to get rid of them okay so all this stuff here um again for me i don't think there's quite enough detail in this uh scan so i may not use this in a normal map i'll keep it but I may just do this stuff in Photoshop to get something a little bit cleaner than this, a little bit more higher resolution than this. Um, but that is that is a quick way for you to generate normal maps without having to go in and paint them, paint the details yourself, and then generate maps that way. And that's definitely a valid way to, to go about it. So 
Um, it's not bad. I don't hate it, but I think I can do it slightly better in ZBrush. And I don't think it'll take too long to do. Now, obviously, this is a blend here. Now, since I'm, I'm, I'd render with Arnold, so I would, I would have to go ahead and, and use an Arnold shader and plug that into an Arnold shader. I also have RenderMan, and if I was going to use RenderMan, I'd have to use a RenderMan shader and plug this into a RenderMan shader. So a lot of this stuff is going to be renderer dependent. So however, however it is that you're going to render the thing, um, <clears throat> make sure that you use the shaders for that renderer because that's generally the best results that you get is using the, the uh, native shaders for the renderer okay now for something like the now as you can see because the uh, tongue has the same green shader as the rest of the shoe we're getting some of that detail on there we'd have to just reproject the tongue separately uh, not that I'd actually project the tongue just because there's not really much to grab off that scan because you got a lot of overlapping things like the laces. You got to spend more time cleaning it up than than um, than it was going to take to generate that map. So the tongue is definitely one that you could probably just paint in ZBrush and get the details that you want. Um, and then the laces, I can just. Now that they're laid out, I can just use a sort of lace shader on there and make it look the way that I want it to look. Okay, and then, you know, the bottom, the uh, sole here, I guess we can try that too. So what I'm going to do is show my scan here and with my tread, and I'm going to control one to isolate. Now my scan is, there we go. So, you know... I don't know there's not that much going on on the bottom but the edges of these are a lot crisper than they are with mine because I did not bevel edges and whatnot in order to save on polygons so we're gonna see if this if that's gonna improve our soul at all so let's get the tread and again we're gonna go to lighting shading transfer maps this time I want my tread to be my uh, my target and actually what I need to do is clear all and then add my tread and again the scan is going to be added as our source mesh and I'm just going to rename this to normal tread and again, I'm going to show my envelope. And let's go to point one. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, let's try. Let's keep it at point two in this case. Hope that it's not too much. And I'm going to leave it on a sign shader again. This one. You know what? I'll just I'll just leave it at 4K again, medium, and um, see how that ends up looking. By the way, map space, tangent space. So when you're dealing with normals, generally use tangent space. Um, I guess object space is one of those rare occasions. If the object is not going to be moving too much, you could probably use object space. But I tend to just do it in, in tangent space. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to turn off my envelope here, and um, again, I'm going to run this, and then I will be back when it is done. So once it's done working, this is what we get. And you can see now that the details on the bottom of the shoe are really looking pretty nice and crisp. Um, we're getting all this stuff in here that wasn't in the original model. We're getting the Vibram logo showing up here now. Um, just the edges of these treads here seem a lot crisper, a lot nicer. Okay, so um, now with regards to the logo here, I'm probably going to just erase this part of the image just because 
I don't own. I don't have any uh, rights to use their logo. I, I don't know if that's a thing, but I'll probably just erase it to be sure. Um, but other than that, I think this came out really nicely. So it's pretty much the way they do it in video games, where they project these details onto a low resolution mesh just to make it look like a much higher resolution mesh. Okay, this in the end will probably be smooth. So if I hit three to smooth it, that looks pretty good to me. So again, let's look at the bump map or the normal map, I should say. So that one came out pretty well. Oops. That one came out pretty nice, pretty clean, very nicely done. So I'm gonna keep that one. I'm gonna keep that one uh, and use that and just plug it into a an Arnold shader and call it good. I think that'll be more than adequate for my uses. Um, so definitely something that you should, you know, think about you doing. Um, now, for the rest of the texturing process on the sole, you know, it's going to be dirt. There's going to be whatever. I think I'm going to either do that in ZBrush or in Substance Painter. I haven't decided yet, but we'll we'll get there when we get there. But as far as a normal map, I think this is pretty pretty darn good. Might need a little bit of cleanup, little things like this. But other than that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so that is the tread. And then, of course, the tongue will be done on its own and the laces as well. But for now, I think that looks pretty good. And then all this other stuff for the laces and stuff. I, I'm not even going to worry about a normal map for there. I'm just going to put some kind of brass or, you know, metallic shader. Put some scratch marks on it. Maybe mess with the roughness. Put a, some kind of grunge map in the roughness. So it's not perfectly clean. Maybe add a little bit of rust, you know, and call it good. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Um... You know, we'll just keep going and um, keep working on this till we get it done. You know, I would like to put a pretty nice texture on the the upper of the shoe here, uh, sort of worn down, well used boots that have you know different you know dirt and blood and whatnot on them. So that should be pretty interesting to do. And then the, the bottom of the shoe here will have, you know, dirt and maybe I'll stick some gum or something in there just to make it interesting. But so far, I like where this is going. Um, now that I've done all this projection, this boot here, I'm going to delete again just because if I save this file with it in it, it's going to be a huge file. So I'm going to delete that and now I can save it and not have to worry about that big 1.8 million polygon boot being in my scene. Okay, so um, that's that should be about it, I think, for this video. And um, we'll see you in the next one.